Well, thank you, Dave. Um, as he said, I am going to be talking about, about on-farm testing, what, finding what works for your farm. Um, we've heard about what's going on at the Boyd Farm near Pullman. We've heard what some of the researchers are doing in Oregon. So what do you do when you want to test something on your farm and get real answers? I'm pressing all sorts of buttons here and nothing's, yeah, I've tried, uh, maybe it was, yeah, I've tried enter. Okay. All right, thank you. So often farmers get visits from salespeople selling them a new product, and this can happen with any product, and often there's not really any real data or information on these new products. For example, several years ago, I stopped by to visit some farmers near Spokane, and they, had, they were no-till farmers, and they had a salesman there who was in the process of selling them a secret microbial solution that would help break down the straw on their farm really, really quickly. And he had a really neat little video about how well this microbial solution worked on a, in a tea plantation in Japan. Well, these farmers are in a 15-inch rainfall zone. How many inches of rain does it take to grow tea? At least 100. Okay, so if you're translating from a tea plantation to Cheney, Washington, there could be some difficulties. And he was going to sell the farmers, he was persuading them to spend $20 an acre over 2,000 acres to put on this microbial solution. So how do you know whether or not any product is going to turn out to be a snake oil or whether it's going to grow you a beautiful crop of organic wheat. How do most farmers, if they are wanting to test something on their farm, what do they do? A new product. They go out and put in a drill strip of this new product and compare it with the rest of the field, correct? That sound pretty much like how it goes? Well, let's see how that works. What we're going to talk about is replication and why it's important. And at this point, you're thinking, oh darn, I'm in the wrong session. She's talking about statistics. And if I had, you're quite right, I am talking about statistics. And if I had put that in my title, you would all be out in the hallway. Um, so what is replication? Well, in some instances, it means reproduction. And then you get that comment from the dog, the pocket dog. You can see there is a dog in that pocket, a little min pin. In, other, in the situation that we're going to talk about, replication means repetition. And basically, repetition of your experiment so that you get reliable information. And yes, I have spent many hours leaning against the back of pickups, kicking clods out in the fields, and talking about replication, and why it's not always a good idea to just take this new product, put one drill strip over the hill, and compare it with the rest of the farm. And let's see why this may not be such a great situation. This is real data from an on-farm test near Lind, Washington in 2010. And what we were doing, the farmer wanted to compare two commercial organic fertilizers. One is known, one was a 1300 product, perfect blend, I mean, nature safe, and the other one is a 444 formulation of perfect blend. And so we had um, five treatments. One was a control with zero nitrogen, and then we had two level, 30, 15 pounds of nitrogen as, from the different products, and then two other um, treatments. And it doesn't really matter specifically what these treatments are, but we're going to look at what happens. So we had out in the field, we had this one, we had these five treatments side by side. We came through at harvest time, he, he's um, harvested that replication, and he was really excited because it looked like great wheat. He got 67 bushels to the acre from the higher level of nature safe. Sounds great. 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre from NatureSafe. Should we go home now? 
Well, we persuaded him. We actually had a second replication out in the field. So he said, let's just harvest the second replication. And so we did that. And so that's the, the data. That's the first replication with this treatment showing up best. Second replication, the same treatment showed up best. But you look here and you see, goodness me, the control is actually not that different. It's 60, nearly 65 bushels versus 67. And then, lo and behold, we actually had a third replication out in the field. So we went ahead and, and harvested the third replication. And look what happens. Well, the 30 pounds of nitrogen is still at the top. But you look and see that the control is pretty darn close. Zero nitrogen is not that different from 30 pounds of nitrogen. And actually, we actually had four replications out in the field. So we stayed there, and we see, harvested the four replications. And lo and behold, it was another treatment, totally different treatment, came out best. So that kind of confused the whole issue. Why on earth didn't we stop at the first time when we were ahead? So what we did was we um, collected that information, ran it through a statistical analysis, and these are the averages of those, replic of those treatments. And as you can see, one of the 30-pound ones came out on top. 71.8 bushels to the acre. Sounds good. You need to have 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre to get the best yield. But if you look next to those yields, you've got these letters. And in the Boyd Farm research, they were talking about statistical significance. And that's what this is. What, does, what is statistical significance? Well, you're trying to find out if one treatment stands out from the rest. And if you have the same letter next to all these treatments, they're not standing out. They're not really different. There's, they're not cons there's not one treatment that is consistently better or worse than the other ones. If you don't have the ability to do statistical analysis, you can do this just with a straight calculator. Calculate the averages. If we go back to this information, here's the raw data from the yields. And if we had one treatment that was consistently top then it would be a standout. But we didn't have one treatment that was consistently top. It didn't stand out, meaning it's not significantly different. You're looking puzzled, Eric. You, am I? You're with me? Good, thank you. I need that affirmation. This is statistics. Okay. So that's, what, that's something that you can do. If you go and you have several strips and the same one comes out top every time, then that's probably the best one. But if you get a whole mishmash and they're not, one doesn't stand out, well, then it probably doesn't stand out. So um, yes, we had this treatment. Um, it looked the best in terms of yield. But then we calculated net returns, which is the gross income from that treatment minus the cost of that fertilizer. And it looked as though this one was worse than all the others. One of the, um, but these ones were no standouts, but one standout on the negative side. That, the, that nature safe by itself, which had looked really good in Rep 1 and 2 as far as yield, was way too expensive to use. And with a downside, none of these fertilizers gave him the protein level he needed for hard wheat. We also repeated this experiment up in Douglas County with soft wheat. I don't have the raw data, but here it looked as though a lower level of nitrogen was pretty darn good. But when we looked at the, the costs, it wasn't really any better than applying no nitrogen at all in that year, in that experiment. So we needed to go back to the drawing board. Um, why do we have this problem? Why do we not have the treatments being consistent across the strips. Well, fields are not uniform. They can be not uniform for a variety of reasons. You can have wet patches in a field. Anyone got wet patches in their fields in the spring? Probably. How do you deal with it? You replicate your strips. You repeat your strips so you're not just depending on one result. A football, pl football player does not get the Heisman Trophy after the first game of the season. He has to prove himself every game of the season in order to win that trophy. This is what we're doing. This is field football. We can also have weed problems in a field. 
if we had had, there's a lot, you may not be able to see it, there's a lot of mustard on this side of the field and patches of it. If you have, you can be skewing your data if you have one tr um, product in that field in the weeds. Replication can help take care of that. You can also have rocks in your field. And this is a spectacular pile of rocks. This is Douglas County. They win the prize for the rock piles. So how do we deal with that? Replication. Actually, we missed, we didn't have that particular strip in the field. So when you're replicating, you need to replicate in space across the field. You need to repeat your treatments across the field. So you get average results, not just one single result. So the plot width must be able to accommodate all the equipment that you use, and you should have wiggle room so that if your combine header is 30 feet wide and your drill is 12 feet wide, you have three, three widths of the drill, you see three strips of the drill, so your plot is 36 feet wide, and then you combine down the middle and you've got some wiggle room on either side. Plot lengths, you need to have your plots at least 300 feet long to take care of the changes in the field. Optimally, you'll have the 900 to 1,000 feet long. You also need should replicate in time, not just depend on one year's results. This is a sample plot plan. You can see that we have um, that these are the treatments, and I color code stuff. Um, I'll tell you this now. When I was in graduate school, I color coded all my notebooks for my class notes so that the, the subjects I liked were in nice bright colors like blue and green and yellow, and statistics was in what color? Black. You got it. <laughs> so here I am. How did I get to talk about this? The answer is, I didn't call in for the conference call when they were deciding on who taught what. So if you don't show up, you get the leftover topic. Um, anyway, so, so be it. So anyway, I like to color code stuff. The treatments are color coded, so the green is one thing, the, the pink is another. You don't want to have the green next to the pink all the time. That's not fair. You mix them up, you put the numbers in a hat, you draw it out of a hat. And if you have a rock pile, right there, you leave a gap. Also check ahead that you have the equipment that you need to do this um, with. You need a, at least a calculator to analyze the data. If you're going to need to take yields, you need to have a yield monitor on your combine or access to a way wagon. And above all, take good notes. This is not a good, I don't know what they're talking about, but standing, writing on your hand is not taking good notes. And I'm the worst at this. I write really clear notes in the field, think it's so clear, come back in three months. What was I doing? I don't know. Other things can help to force a decision. The, what we were comparing was these two fertilizer products, Perfect Blend and Nature Safe, worked fine the first year. The second year, the Nature Safe company had changed changed. Um, the formulation was given a different name. It still supposedly was 1300, but it didn't look the same, and it did not flow at all. My colleague came home looking and smelling like that, and I was not very popular. So we didn't do any more nature safe. So this year, we're going to the, uh, the farmers change his mind, and he's doing some intercropping, so he's got perfect blend in the, in the front um, drill winter wheat in the middle one, and winter peas in the back, and he's doing an intercropping situation. I also talked about replicating over time, working, doing an experiment one year. Which year was the average year? Who can tell me which was the average year? There isn't such a thing. So you're not going to get an average result if you don't have an average year. So that's why we replicate over time. This year, in this plot, it rained after he seeded. So it, the ground crusted, the wheat didn't come up that well. I think he might have actually tried, uh, he might have reseeded some of it. The, another year we had weed problems. He had a lot of weeds in the field. This year, this is what the intercropping looked like a couple of weeks ago when I was out there. So far, it's looking great. And after my dog had explained to the farmer really clearly that it's not safe for dogs to ride in the back of a pickup, he asked politely, what are you thinking, Owen? And Owen said, the 2012 plot, it looks so good. Now I understand why we replicated it over years, and I'm really excited to see what it does. So thank you. And
The other thing to remember is that this all takes a lot longer than you anticipate. So pack water, bring a lunch, and sometimes you need to bring dinner too because you could end up seating in the dark. So if you want to know more about this, there is a WSU does have a bulletin that is available. And we have two more years available on an dry land organic um, project. And if anyone is burning to the answer a question on their farm, come and talk with me. Thank you.